Hi, I'm Daniel Pomerantz, talking to you from Honest Reporting Headquarters in Jerusalem. The emergency meeting of the United Nations General Assembly is to discuss a resolution demanding that the United States rescind its recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The plenary meeting of the 10th Emergency Special Session of the General Assembly will be held at 10 a.m. on Thursday, 21 December, in the General Assembly Hall. Earlier this week at the United Nations Security Council, the United States vetoed a resolution that, quote, demanded, unquote, that the United States do the same. Some global leaders and talking heads have even said that the U.S. decision on Jerusalem violates international law. But lost in this discussion is what the international law actually says. So let's take a look. We start by understanding the nature of the UN resolutions actually being discussed. Only resolutions passed under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter actually carry the force of international law. Exceedingly rare and passed only by the Security Council, such resolutions typically relate to issues of major disturbances in global or regional security. For example, a 1990 resolution authorized countries around the world to launch a global response to Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait. Other resolutions, such as Security Council resolutions passed under Chapter 6 or General Assembly resolutions passed under Chapter 4, are non-binding. So for example, this week's Security Council resolution was proposed under Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, and the General Assembly resolution would relate to Chapter 4. According to the UN Charter itself, and also relevant decisions by the International Court of Justice, such resolutions do not carry the force of international law. They are, at best, international suggestions. So why is Israel the only country in the world that is supposedly not allowed to decide its own capital? Why is the United States the only nation being told where it may or may not place its own embassies? Some claim that Jerusalem is international territory, or corpus separatum in Latin, because this is what United Nations Resolution 181 called for when it was passed in 1947. However, not only is this not international law, being a Chapter 4 resolution, but the Arab League strongly rejected the resolution at the time and responded to it by launching a war of annihilation against the one-day-old Jewish state. Some make similar arguments about UN Resolution 242, passed by the Security Council after the Six-Day War in 1967. History often overlooks the fact that the PLO, which at the time was the official representative of the Palestinian people, formally rejected Resolution 242, and other Arab states rejected it either in word or in deed by not respecting Israel's borders and by launching the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Today, many of the Arab states that originally rejected Resolutions 181, 242, and, and others are now paradoxically claiming that they constitute international law. Finally, some are saying that the status of Jerusalem should be settled by negotiations between the parties and not by unilateral international decisions. Not only does this mean holding Israel to an entirely different standard than every other country on earth with respect to choosing its capital, but it is also wildly hypocritical because the same General Assembly voting on Jerusalem also voted in 2012 to unilaterally recognize Palestine as an observer state at the United Nations. Apparently, the UN General Assembly objects only to some unilateral decisions and not to others. Today's vote is a part of what's called a UN General Assembly emergency session. Even though there are some 200 countries, 124 global territorial disputes, and at least 60 active conflicts in the world, there have only been in the history of the UN 10 emergency General Assembly sessions. Five of them related to Israel.